School is in. But are you really ready to learn? Open your eyes to a new day in education with The Awakening Educator, a program specifically designed to explore a new mindful way of educating our youth. Learn about social-emotional learning, new modalities of teaching, and the most relevant topics in education with your hosts, Susan Andrian and Megan Sweet. Susan and Megan will take you inside the issues by looking at them from different points of view, from policies and research to teaching models that are actually used in schools. There's never a dull moment in this classroom. Have any questions you'd like to ask? Maybe you have knowledge you'd like to share and share your thoughts live on air. Grab a pen and paper and get ready to open your textbooks and minds to a new way of learning on The Awakening Educator. Hi, everyone, and welcome to The Awakening Educator. I'm Megan Sweet. And I'm Susan Andrian. And today we are so excited to have five guests to talk to us about being a high school senior in a time of coronavirus. Uh, our seniors are going to talk about what it's like to be in quarantine and have their senior year cut short, um, things that they were excited and looking forward to. We had five amazing guests who were really have just so much maturity. Uh, we have Jordan, Jordan, Jamin, Justin, Jason, Jason, and Lena. Lena. <laughs> That's right. Uh, so three, three men and two women will be talking with us and uh, we interviewed each of them separately. So what we'll do is we'll string the video, the interviews together. Um, and so you'll, you'll kind of hear us kind of introduce each one of them separately. And um, I don't know about you, Susan, but it was such a profound experience to talk to the kids. And I, I, I I think we had we got so many really interesting insights to talk with them and and the main takeaway I, I I have is feeling really excited about the future and um relieved and I'm not trying to be a hater on our current millennials I really am not um but I I have sometimes struggled to understand connecting with millennials and I guess these kids are also in, considered a millennials but talking to them and hearing how grounded they are and um, how they're taking this moment in stride and just their focus gives me a lot of hope and confidence for the future. So I, I just really love this, this series. Yeah, I was really surprised. I kind of expected it a lot more um, feeling bad, poor me kind of stuff. And they really were so grounded in gratitude and understanding. It wasn't that there wasn't grief or sadness about the, what they're missing. But they did have some uh, incredible um, sense of perspective that uh, the importance of what this time is and really understanding um, how to keep, that it's really about keeping us all safe. And they are moving towards their future that looks so bright. And I agree, I was really uh, struck by how mature they were and how um, it gave me hope for future yeah. for sure. Yeah. So we hope you all enjoy this, these interviews as much as we did. Um, so much thanks to Jordan, Jordan, Jason, Jamin, and Lena uh, for- You were so much time. better at that than me. <laughs> I'm not going to say it fast. I'll tell you that because yeah. it will become a jumble. But um, yeah, each one of them was unique um, and had some shared commonalities as well. And I, I just think it's, it's a really great series, uh, interview series. And I'm, I'm so excited to share it with everybody. So thank you, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Hey, everybody. We are so excited to have Lena Anderson here with us, uh, another senior who's going to share her experience of what it's like to be a senior in this uh, very crazy time. So welcome, Lena. We're so happy to have you here. Hi, <laughs> I'm Lena, uh, senior at St. Mary's. Awesome. You want to tell us a little bit, a, a little bit more about yourself, or? Um, I've I live in Albany, California. I like to be outside a lot, <laughs> which is not perfect for this time. But uh, or actually, it is. But um. Mm -hmm. Kinda, <laughs> and I play volleyball, and I am a part of inclusive community at my school, and I'm very involved. 
and I like to see my friends and yeah. Yeah. So given that so much of what you just shared about yourself as being outside, being really social, being part of a volleyball team. Um, I'm curious, how has this time been for you? Um, it's definitely been harder because I'm a very, I'm a very outgoing extrovert person. Um, so not being able to see my friends all the time, like at school is rough. Um, and I've been going on a lot of walks, which is nice, which, which is nice. Um, but just staying inside, just doing work, it's, it's a routine that I'm not fond of. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah. I can imagine. Um, especially I've been thinking a lot about extroverts, um, over the last few weeks because I'm, um, I'm an introvert in extroverts clothing. So people expect that I'm an extrovert, but I actually love being by myself. <laughs> so for me, this has been kind of like a vacation and, you know, I've yeah. been building up to this point. But if you are an extrovert, then this must be really hard because, you know, it's all about where you get your energy and, and your yeah. connection. I'm an extrovert, but sometimes I definitely need my moments where, so it's been nice. Yeah. It definitely has been relaxing in some ways, but in other ways it's been frustrating. Yeah. Well, and, um, you know, something we've talked about with uh, a lot of the other youth we've been speaking to is um, not only is this your senior year, but it's the last few months of your senior year, which is the time (laughs) when like all the good stuff happens and when you get to kind of let go of all the other stuff. So just wondering how you're feeling about these milestones that often, um, you know, you think about and get ready for for years and that are supposed to culminate in these final months that right now are, you're chilling at home for. So I'm just wondering how you're feeling. And Well, I'm really sad and disappointed because I've been looking forward to like these few months for like four years. So it's what I've been working up and being like, oh, I'm going to get this reward. And I've seen all the seniors be able to have all the, these things and have a great time. So I just wanted that too. But <laughs> um, I was really looking forward to prom and actually and a graduation, like my mm-hmm. high school graduation. And my 18th birthday is coming up soon too. So it's just, it's really disappointing. So, yeah. yeah. Hmm. What are... um sort of thinking about, we asked this question to some of the other guests as well. So it's sort of thinking about because how typically we celebrate this big, huge milestone um, and transition from a really important part of your life to a next really important part of your life. Are there some ways that you're thinking about trying to culminate the, this period of time, even if you're not able to come back together or to uh, acknowledge the accomplishments, even though it's not exactly what you hoped? Yeah. But. Um, well, I'm not exactly sure how to, maybe I'll have my own little mini prom with my family, (laughs) you know, (laughs) the things I wore last year, whatever, (laughs) Um, or I'm still actually trying to write a speech for graduation or to be one of the people who could be selected to have a speech. Um, so maybe everyone's saying that maybe something will happen in the summer or really late, but so I'm still just like hoping that even if it's not happening now, it'll happen eventually. Yeah. Yeah. It sounds like I'm just wondering how you're coping. It sounds like you're handling it pretty well and are are taking it in stride. And I'm just wondering how, like what process you've been going through to get there to, Um, to be so balanced about it right now. Well, on the outside, I'm really trying to be balanced about it, but inside, I'm really upset. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I don't know. I'm just eating a lot of good food. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. That's that's a plus to have good food during this time. Yeah, and learning how to make it. That's- ah. Yeah, that was one of my questions. What What are you doing with your time? You know, one, one of the things that... Um, seniors mm-hmm. have been talking about is like all of a sudden they have all this time is there something that you're doing with your time is there something that you've been pursuing that you've all or well 
one, I have to make a big decision about which college I want to go to. And that's also a really big factor of why this time is even more difficult because I can't go visit like the colleges I'm interested in um, mm-hmm. if they're like far away. Um, but so I've been like online a lot <laughs> on TV is mm-hmm. nice. Um, I've read some, a lot of music, um, walks. Um, online shopping. <laughs> <laughs> I've done some of that too, Lena. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No comment over here. <laughs> I've been getting a lot of good sleep though, so that's a really big plus. Um, and yeah. I've just had a lot of nice downtime and time with my family, which has been nice. We've been watching a lot of TV shows together. We're going on walks together. Yeah. Yeah, we've heard a few of the a few of the seniors saying kind of the same thing, which is that it's been hard to slow down. But actually, at this time of of um, transition, it's a little bit. It's kind of sweet to be able to spend so much time with your family when normally, actually, you're already starting to pull away, and then you're really going to make this big change in the fall, possibly. So, as much as they're probably driving you crazy, or you wish you could be with your friends, <laughs> there is this sweetness of being able to be connected really closely with your family. Um, yeah, during this time, which is mm-hmm. kind of cool. Yeah, it's nice to have a, a break. It's just like hard not to know when the break's going to be over. Right. Yeah, the unknowing is really tough. Yeah. yeah. So what do you think you want to study in school or what are you looking forward to in college? Um, I keep going back and forth between business or environmental science or environmental policy Um, I would like to find a way to see if those two things could mesh together. Um, but yeah, those are my main interests and marine biology. I I think those things could mesh. that we're definitely, I think, um, moving in a direction of, um, environmental business, right? And there's a growing environmental business. That's interesting. Um, yeah, I'm, cu- I'm curious about what this transition to online learning has been like and what some of the learnings have been and what this experience is like doing distance learning. Um, what are the, some of the things that are really working or some of the things that are more difficult about staying engaged? Well, I go to St. Mary's and they're a very community-oriented school, and which is really nice at this time because they always reach out. Um, Maybe sometimes a little too much, but <laughs> but um, they always reach out and they try to still make it feel like St. Mary's, even if you're not mm-hmm. there physically. Like they have these extra, um, we have this thing called C block or community, or I think it's community block or whatever. Um, and we just meet with our little groups of people and just talk about how we're doing and we'll like split up and do like a, a little Zumba class <laughs> or oh, meditation nice. or something. Um, that's what happened today in school. Um, but classes are only 30 minutes long and it went from an hour and AP classes to only 30 minutes. So there's a lot of extra work to do at home. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I like that they're 30 minutes. I, I'm not complaining about that <laughs> because I finish at like 12 every single day so and get up at like 10. (laughs) Oh, nice. Wow. But the, but the work has become more independent work. You're expected to do more of the work independently. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And in some classes it's a lot more work and in other classes it's much nicer. (laughs) Yeah. It's a nice slowdown to, um, to ending out school since uh, you're, it's just the quite a literal, just like slow ebb away from learning um, in high school anyway. Um, yeah. How do you feel like this time and just even just living, uh, coming of age in a pandemic, coming of age in a time mm-hmm. when um, there's so much uh, political and kind of social discord that's been going on even before the pandemic happened, I'm just wondering how do you feel like that's going to shape you as a young adult and going into college? Well, I always joke 
that since we're all growing up in a pandemic right now, we're all going to be germaphobes when we're older. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I feel like, because I always think like, how is this going to affect us later on? Because are we all going to still be paranoid and buying extra toilet paper? And <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Um, I think in a way it bonds everyone a lot more because yeah. everyone's going through something similar, be staying at home and not being able to do their regular lives. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting. We were talking, Megan and I were talking with uh, other guests around this, this shared experience that all of you as seniors are going to have. Uh, it, it, when you get to college that freshman year, around everybody coming in the freshman year will have had this similar experience of having their senior year cut off and that, yeah. that transition and wondering um, how you feel it might allow you to bond or or to connect with folks from all over the country who have all experienced a similar sort of yeah I think well I think at the point once we get to college nobody will want to actually talk about it anymore <laughs> everyone will be <laughs> then um, yeah I will be <laughs> I'm gonna be done talking about it but um there will always be like that underlying I know we've been through the a similar thing yeah. and it's been rough and that we got something important taken away from us. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. it is that, that dilemma of, I, and I've, I hear it in your, how you're talking to sort of trying to balance out recognizing, you know, you have good food and you get to, we get to, to, to be in this safe space with our family that's relatively comfortable. And although there's this great loss and sort of balancing out the feeling, the grief around what you missed out on that you were looking really looking forward to versus being able to have gratitude for the situation that you're in. And you can kind of really hear the trying to find that balance that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm wondering, how do you do that? How do you manage keeping that balance? And I know you said it looks like it on the outside and it's not so much on the inside, but what are some of the things that you're doing to help you stay grounded in that? Well, that everything will work itself out and that, um, I don't know, I, I'm always going to be disappointed that uh, my senior year didn't go the way I thought it was going to go, but um, there's nothing I can really do about it. So. Um, I'm just trying to make light of the situation by just having a fun time, <laughs> yeah. just I, treating it like a vacation, a break, mm -hmm. spring break, the entire, <laughs> for three months. <laughs> month, spring break, three months. yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's a good attitude of just like, you know, trying to have fun and acknowledge, I think, but I think it's also really important and I appreciate that you're acknowledging that it hurts and that it's painful. Yeah. Because I think often people um, try and put on a, a positive face and even will deny to themselves the impact that something as profound as it like this can have. So I think it's great that you're acknowledging it and, and naming it and um, <laughs> kind of grappling with it because it's going to be there um, as, a, as, a, as a moment in time, as a pivotal moment in your life and you're having a, an experience that none of us who are alive today, absent some people that are well into their 100s, have ever experienced, right? And many yeah. of us... Um, yeah, we haven't experienced something like this on a global scale since I think we sang this nineteen eighteen, which I was think? like uh, yeah, nineteen eighteen. I think it was nineteen eighteen. So a yeah. very long time, more than a hundred years ago. So mm -hmm. it's a new experience for all of us to be moving through that and to be moving through it together, um, and just to be grappling with all the different changes of emotions and. For me, I find that it almost comes and goes day by day. So there are days where I feel like really motivated and I'm, I run the three miles and I do the chores. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. And other days where I'm like, oh, I think I'm just going to watch like eight hours of TV and maybe I'll get quite a day eight hours, but like I can't seem to get off the couch. Um, yeah. And that's just real. And just acknowledging that is a really important thing. And, you know, I'm an adult and I've, I've had – you know, some of these big moments pass already. And so I think having some big moments that you're looking forward to probably makes that impact even more profound. And, it does. Yeah. I did have the days where it actually like 
set in that I wasn't going to have these things anytime soon was not a happy day. Um, mm-hmm. And I had school and I had C blocks. So I was talking to people and I was just really upset. Mm-hmm. Um, cause it is, I don't like to dwell on it cause it makes me really upset. Um, but yeah, it, yeah, I, I imagine for, and I'm wondering if you're hearing this from some of your peers that, um, that some people may be experiencing some depression or anxiety and stress along with it and wondering if, if that is something that's coming up for your peers and, and how you guys are showing up and supporting each other through the emotional stress involved. Yeah, well, definitely people who already struggled with mental illness or depression before the pandemic, I bet are definitely having a much harder time um I mean I'm I didn't have any huge issues before and I'm really struggling sometimes Mm -hmm. um so I I can't imagine um so what are you looking forward to once the the pandemic quarantine lifts what are you what are you like what's you know they always say the thing like first where are you gonna go what's the first move what's the what are you gonna do or when you think about going off to college Mm -hmm. what are you looking forward to well, I have to decide which college. <laughs> yeah, this seems like a big decision. That's yeah. exciting. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, what am I going to do? I'm going to see all my friends and go to the beach. That's nice. what I'm <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we'll have a big picnic where we can share food. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and touch each other. <laughs> hug. Hugs. Lots of hugs. Yeah. <laughs> I know it's funny you were saying, Lena, that um, this fear of like, like how how is the quarantine going to keep um, change our behaviors? And, and this morning, I dropped off a present for uh, one of my kids' friends, who's also a, a child that I've known since she was born, who I really loved. And it was it's become a little bit of this new normal. I dropped the, the present off on the t- on the on the porch, and then I like texted the mom, and then I went to my car, and then I waved from the car. And then I saw her lean down to pick up the present and she hesitated for a minute because it's like, Oh, are we supposed to like touch things or not? And yeah. you had to get the um, bleach out to wash it off first. Right. I'm like, and yeah. then I was like, what, what are she's going to do inside the house before she gives it to her daughter? And like, what's the wipe down going to happen for the present? <laughs> and, and I was like, Oh, but you know, we will, we'll, we'll get past that too. Like, I think there will yeah. be like, we'll adapt back to normal again. Um, and this moment will pass too, and and it will become formative in maybe ways that we can't. You know, you probably can't anticipate. None, none of us can anticipate what's gonna, how this is gonna change us. Um, but yeah, I, so I think that it will be different, and you'll be you'll be different because of it, but probably in really profound ways. Um, what colleges are you thinking about? Like, where are you where are you, where are you debating? It's on the list. <laughs> um, I'm thinking about UW. University uh-huh. of Washington, mm-hmm. or um, Long Beach, mm-hmm. or I don't know. I or Those are two I'm very also, different places. I was gonna say sun <laughs> or rain. Exactly. Or That's why it's sun such a huge or rain. Sun. Yeah, so I like both. Yeah. yeah. Well, UW is a really beautiful campus, and uh, yeah. I went. I was supposed to go to graduate school there. I didn't, but um, oh, I spent a lot of time cool. there. And I love it. And Long Beach is beautiful, so it really would yeah. be hard to, would be hard to lose either way there. Um, yeah. yeah, some good choices to have, hard, but yeah. really good choices to have. And it seems like we're either one will be a great experience. Yeah. yeah, I keep telling Susan that I, if I had the poise and the confidence and the the knowledge that all of you had when I was eighteen, it would have been a really different young adulthood for me because I just kind of blindly bumbled through. Mm-hmm. Um, I still kind of am, but like for sure, when I was younger, it was it was uh, it was all kind of just luck. So it's great that you have choices and that you're thinking through them so carefully. And um, yeah. Uh, so, it, it, in what, if there were just a few things that you wanted um, people to know about this experience of being a senior, what would be kind of the prime things you want want them to understand about this experience? Well. To all the teachers out there, um, take it easy on the seniors. Just <laughs> go easy on us because it's 
hard enough that we can't actually see our friends or get the rewards we've all been working for and don't like think oh you're home alone so or you can do all this extra work too like there's no need for that <laughs> um, and uh, what else um stay home <laughs> stay home because i want my rewards <laughs> mm-hmm. um, i want the little senior gifts that i was supposed to have but um so stay home for all the people who don't get the yeah yeah stay home and and what i heard in what you said there is really attend to the so the emotional needs of the their students um rather mm-hmm. than the academic which um i i'm one of the things that i'm grateful for i I feel like in this moment in time is a recognition that the emotional needs of students is really important and mm-hmm. that we need to, we need to learn to attend to them more and put more, more weight on them. Um, and so I think all these other kind of hidden or often unspoken parts of education are coming to light and being important. Mm-hmm. And I think addressing, sorry, I have a dog mm-hmm. behind me. Um, addressing, uh, <laughs> addressing the emotional needs of kids is a, is a really big deal, especially now. So, yeah. 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 Lena, this is so wonderful to talk to you. Thank you so yeah. much. Thank for, you. It's been such a time. pleasure. Thank you so much. It was fun talking to you guys. Yeah. Good, <laughs> luck you with your, good luck with your decision and, and you. I'm sure you'll make the right decision for you. And, um, and I hope that you get exciting. to have some of those senior moments happen yeah. Yeah, a little yeah. bit later. Absolutely, yeah. and and if you do end up take, having a prom at home with your family, <laughs> lots of pictures. You guys come? <laughs> absolutely, yeah, definitely. <laughs> we'll post them on our, our prom dresses. Site. I can yeah. them out. <laughs> I could put together a prom dress. <laughs> <laughs> definitely, awesome. Well, thank you so much, <laughs> Lena. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you Thanks. so much. Have a good day. Thank you. Bye. 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 We are so excited here to have Jason Hill Jr., a senior at St. Mary's uh, College High School. And uh, we're going to talk to Jason about his experience as a senior having it cut off with COVID-19 and being home. So, Jason, I'd love to give you a chance to introduce yourself and and let our audience know a little bit about who you are. Yeah. So, hi, everybody. Um, (laughs) and the listeners to The Waking Youth Educator. My name is Jason Hill, 17 years old. Um, I go to St. Mary's in Berkeley, uh, live in Hercules, California, uh, and I play baseball. Um, um, I'm just trying to think of things to say. Uh, <laughs> to myself. You don't have to worry it's about like, that. You don't have to, don't <laughs> worry about it. That's... I don't want to get too egotistical and start talking about my personality. But uh, I try to <laughs> you can tell us about your person that you can let our audience know all about your personality. That's okay. We, we like It'll personality come, here. I'll do the interview. <laughs> It'll come the interview yeah. Just give it time. I don't have so, to it. Jason, I'm really excited you're here because what we've been, you know, Susan and I have been um, our show. Generally, we talk about different topics in education and explore them around adults um, and what they're kind of help the educators to be stronger in their role in teaching kids. But it struck us as we have been sheltering in place and dealing with all of what COVID-19 has brought to our personal lives, how much kids are impacted. We're both also moms, and so we're watching it happen with our own children. So we wanted to do a series just featuring kids, and we very quickly realized that it would be important to talk to seniors in high school because in a lot of ways you guys are in the most deeply impacted because it's that time of life that people so look forward to and these big milestones are kind of getting cut short. And so we just want to hear how you're feeling or what comes up for when you think about the different things that maybe you're looking forward to that are going to be paused or maybe canceled because of the situation. Yeah, that's a, that's a really good question. Um, I've heard that a lot from a lot of students at St. Mary's and, and around uh, the local school district uh, about how their senior year will be different. Um, for me, yes, uh, I won't have a senior prom. Um, I won't have a, I, I, or I might later in the year, uh, and I mean in August, 
um, which isn't really a senior prom. It's more like making up for what was lost. Um, I didn't have an opportunity. I actually, um, I love to play baseball. I've been playing since I was eight. But I never had an opportunity to play a season of varsity baseball in high school. Or I did. I played for three games this year. Um, last season, I was injured. I had a micro fracture. My group played my elbow. So I had to sit out for nearly the whole season. Um, uh, and I underwent physical therapy. Um, so this season was supposed to be the breakout season, you know, win in CS um, and, and put something up on the wall something to at least tell others that you were here and you did something productive. And, and the same with other sports, our girls and boys basketball team advanced to the CIF state championship only to have that canceled um, due to the COVID-19. Um, but I'm understanding, and, and as I sit in my bedroom um, and kind of sit in silence, I realize that even though this opportunity seems to, to be, you know, disappointing and, you know, you lose out on many things. I, I know personally that I still have a lot to look forward to. Um, and I have a lot to be grateful for. Um, I still have my family. My family's still blessed. Um, we've had minimal damage to COVID-19 from our family. Um, and you know, things, things can still go on. It, it, I think it's all about mindset. So, I try to embrace a growth mindset of, okay, you can't do this, but what can you get done? So I won't have a season, but that doesn't mean that it's time to stop training. I can get out there. I have a backyard. Um, we've set up a bow net. I have a basketball hoop. Um, obviously, I have electronics. I try not to get stuck on those all day, but it's been a challenge. I like to binge watch episodes. I think I've watched a whole season of The Ranch on Netflix in like the past week. But, you know, I can get outside and I can practice and work on my craft because I want to play college baseball. Um, uh, I'm almost certain I'll be heading to Sonoma State next year and run a part. I want to play for their squad. So I have something to look forward to in that case. Um, I know there's a lot of work that needs to be done, um, not just me, but within my community. And that's work that some of that work can get done virtually. Um, so while it's disappointing – to not have the rest of my school year at St. Mary's on campus, uh, the place that I've grown, matured, um, and grown to love really my teachers. Um, it won't be happening. Um, it, there's no reason for me to, to continue to get down on myself about things that I can't control. I'm really struck uh, by your gratitude and your, your gratitude and your ability to, um, think about this the way that you have, you know, I, 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 and I hadn't really thought about the impact on sports on seniors and sports until you, you brought it up, you know, I was going thinking about graduation and prom and all of those things, but really given that you had an injury last year and then this is an important year in sports. And um, I'm just so uh, inspired by your ability to be grounded in gratitude, which is such a hard thing to do when, um, so much of your world has sort of been shrunk? Well, my world, uh, I've always learned to, uh, I've learned to, to, to be accepting um, of things. And I have a lot of, I was just talking to seniors today and they're mad. They're upset that their senior year has been cut short. Um, and that, a lot of things that they wanted to do this year, you know, senior ditch day, you know, <laughs> out of the plane, right? You know, and now you're all ditching the whole time. <laughs> yeah. Ditch. Um, and, but, you know, I, I, I realize that some of that stuff, that's cool, right? Cause that's a once in a lifetime thing. And I'm glad I went to prom last year because otherwise my grandkids and my kids asked me, dad, how was prom? I can say, well, I went. Right, because this year that wouldn't have happened or probably won't happen. So, you know, to sit around and, and mope and get frustrated over things you can't control for me is not only unproductive, but it's really selfish. And I use strong language because there's people out there that are dead, they have no more life. And to complain about a school dance or a school function um, or walking across the aisle, that's a small price to pay for the safety and security of our community. Mm. 
Mm. So, in you know, there's things you can do because at the end of the day, it's a piece of paper. And it's, you know, people always talk about it's about the journey. And so there was a journey to get to this point. And that journey won't stop just because we have to stay inside. This will be a part of our journey, too. It's unique. Um, and it's something that we will have done that nobody else will have done. We've graduated under these circumstances. Um, I know an intern that I worked with last year. Um, she's graduating from UC Davis. She's under the same circumstances. Um, and I'm grateful to actually have the opportunity to continue my school year online because a lot of students um, in these public schools have stopped school for a while um, because they were not prepared for this. Uh, so it's, yep. it's very, very, there's a lot to be thankful for. Um, I'm thankful. I personally haven't got the virus. I don't think I got the virus. I got scared a couple of weeks ago because I was on enrichment week. Um, and enrichment week is a week where you get to have fun at St. Mary's. And so on the ride up to Sonoma, we were going zip lining. Um, I was sneezing. I sneezed like seven times in a row. And I was like, Ugh. Something's not right. And so I was like, yo, dad, I think we have to go to the doctor. And we have to quarantine me if I, if I keep feeling bad. Then he asked me if I like had a fever or, or chills. And I was like, well, not really. I've just been sneezing and, and coughing. And so um, that was as far as it got. Yeah. I'm so impressed by, uh, like Susan, by your attitude and also by understanding that this is just a moment in time. And, and I love this image that you shared, uh, Jason, of like it takes a road to get, you know, there was a lot that got you to this moment and then there's what's going to come next. And I'm just wondering as you enter into, you're preparing to go into adulthood and start your life and kind of your adulthood um, in, in just a matter of weeks here, how do you think this experience is going to shape that? Um, and how do you, how do you start thinking about that shift that you're about ready to make into being on your own and away from the house? And... Well, I won't be too far in Sonoma. So <laughs> right. I always need to come back. One of my decisions uh, to, to staying close to home was, was my family and, and my grandparents. Mm-hmm. Um, I absolutely love my grandma. Um, and right now I haven't been able to give her a hug for a month. So I'm glad that before that I was giving her uh, maybe too many hugs. Um, <laughs> I, I don't know any grandma that thinks there's too many hugs. So. <laughs> you know, yeah. And I have, um, and, and so moving on into adulthood, um, it's, it's going to be a transition. Um, it won't be smooth by any means. Um, but that transition I think will be minimized by the locality of my college or the college that I choose to attend. And, and it won't be a very big change. I know a lot of people that go out of state or to Southern California or, or far away, you know, they get that sense of they're completely out there. They're independent. And if there's something that happens, then they're going to be on their own through those circumstances. It's not like those parents can fly across the country or fly north or south to go and help them out. So I, I chose to really work on that transition, having my family close by because you never know when you need something. And um, for me, my family's helped me so far. Um, or if something happens um, to my family, uh, it would be great to be close by. Yeah, so, that's like that's like a mom's or a dad's, like that's a, the dream answer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's you know, cool that you feel that close. That was not how I felt. <laughs> I was 18, yeah, I was like, like, I can't goodbye. Wait to <laughs> yeah, like, uh, peace out. I'm like, you know, because I'm like, well, I'm going to need that uh, occasional, like, I won't, I don't think I'll need much from them, but I, you know, you want to see them. There's a lot of people that go out and they say, well, I kind of didn't think I'd miss my dad or my mom, but I actually miss them. So I'm like, well, yeah, you're your parents. You've grown up with them for quite some time now. I might have miss them. So, you know, and, but that's a part of the growing phase and that will happen yeah. to everybody. I just chose mine to, to take more of a transition um, and, and, and still have that sense of independence, but dependence. I'm okay. curious. I'm curious if you have any advice for other, cause you seem to have this ability to ground, like Megan said, in the, in the journey of this being a part of the journey. And also you said that no one else is going to have this experience of graduating under there's, it's going to be kind of memorable, right? It's going to be special in a different kind of way. You'll always be the generation that graduated from home. 
Um, but wondering if there's <laughs> any advice that you could give to other young people or to parents who are supporting other young people who are seniors and are in this transition and trying to struggle to be able to hold on to the gratitude or grounding the way you have? Well, everybody's different, uh, Miss Andrea and, and Miss Sleep. So every, how everybody goes through um, their phases of, uh, of transition and kind of coping with this are going to be different. Um, and that's something we were talking about today within my small um, C block and not to break off, but so at St. Mary's we have C blocks, which we've been meeting for the past four years and it's about mm. 20, 10, 15 students in the C block. And so we talk about, um, you know, our, or, or maybe uh, how we feel um, and just things going on with school. Social is called social emotional learning. Um, so it's just a time we take, it's about 40 minutes, usually it's twice a month, um, but now we've been meeting twice a week in this crisis. So we've been talking to each other for a while now. So everybody has very different opinions, very pronounced opinions. Um, and it's interesting to hear how they, how they take those, uh, uh, opinions. And so they, they help me kind of form and mold my own opinion because, uh, they, they make me feel, you know, that I can't. You know, I can give people, uh, I can't really give people advice on how to live their own lives. I can only present my life and the ups and downs that have come with it. And kind of like a buffet, they can take what they want from it. Yeah, um, that's so very mature. <laughs> for me, yeah, very mature. So for me, I would say um, to those parents and kids, um, you know, talking talking is for me it was important um, I always say for me or I try to say for me um, because talking about my experiences for me talking um, talking to my dad we sat down and talked um, I knew um, about two weeks three weeks ago that we weren't going back to school and I heard a lot of students saying you know well we might be able to go back to school in May and or, and you know it's just going to be a little bit of time even the, the principal was giving out emails um, saying they were sending distance learning. And I just knew as they kept extending it, I knew that there was no way that we were going to go back to school. So for me, it was being kind of, I'm optimistic, and but my dad's a realistic. So <laughs> if you clash those two personalities together, you get a sort of optimism, realism that makes you kind of look glass half full, right? So you know the situation. And it's how to best move forward in that situation. There's plenty of things that I can get done now um, and have the opportunity to do. You know, a lot of seniors said, I don't have time to get things done. I haven't gotten any sleep. Now those seniors are getting a lot of sleep. I mean, I'm getting any things done, but we can work on that. Yeah, yeah. I know I it's have. It's a great advice to, to end on. The... Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, so. this was so inspiring. I love this notion of like taking advantage of the time, accepting that where you're at, and also just um, yeah, just being. I just hear so much openness and also just like a, a groundedness from you. And it's really exciting to know that you're you're part of the generation that's going to be leading us forward. Because um, this is the kind of attitude that um, I feel like we desperately need um, in this time, these times in particular. So it's been really inspiring to talk to you, Jason. Thank you yeah, so thanks. much. Thanks. Anytime. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I, maybe I, we I, can I, check in on I've you a year from now when you're finishing up your first year of college because uh, that might yeah, be in the that next. That would be cool. Yeah, a real yeah. cool <laughs> follow up. So we'd and, love and to have that's you just, back in a year. Yeah. yeah and, and that's just. And, and a lot of things I said, this time actually went so fast. Uh, I know. It, does, it, it was just like, it? it's like a, it's like a regular conversation. You just sit down. That's the one thing I like to do though, is talk um, and talk it out. And, and now, um, and I'm not going to say more than ever, because it's always been important, but it is an important time to talk now um, mm -hmm. because I, I notice I, I make a bet that when we go back and we go away from social distancing, people maybe are going to be more excited to put the phones down and talk at least for a yeah. month or so. Then it's going to go back to normal. 
but you know, I hope so. I think it's such a great point, Jason. That we we didn't we weren't talking very much before. We weren't out and interacting very much, oh. and the social distancing is actually creating a connection that we haven't had for a long time. That's a really it's a really great point. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I, I hope you're right. I I I, I, I sure I, hope so. I hope so sure too. This so. has been such a pleasure, Jason. You're, yeah, thank you. Thank you. You're again. impressive. Your, your parents have done a good job. Absolutely. <laughs> well, you. <laughs> Class is dismissed. Wasn't that fun? Susan and Megan are always happy to greet you on the next episode of The Awakening Educator. Connect with us on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. Education is the foundation for a brighter future. Open your eyes to the Awakening Educator.